others to share her love of the park and its wonders. She also teaches digital asset management. Damn. Because if you have a thousand of images, how do you find the one you want? Or maybe you just have too many damn images. Uh, Cindy, <laughs> Cindy has a reputation for shouting at her damn clients. There is only one workflow, it is Cindy's, but it is passion to share, not anger, that drives her. She's invariably right, as the panic calls from those who transgress will attest. So look out, she's going to share some of that passion tonight. Please welcome Cindy Goodell. Well, I'm here tonight because I was caught lurking in the bushes behind the library, by a librarian. Animal behavior is never quite what you expect. This is Cindy Goodell in her native habitat. Warm, sunny, great surf, food. Perfect. Why would anyone leave? Being born to an artist's mother and a nuclear engineer father made for an odd offspring. The genotype was firmly set in concrete. The phenotype was in turmoil. Scientific discipline, artistic self-expression, and then, of course, there was nurture. Competition, a tomboy born into a gladiatorial arena of three competitive brothers who gave no quarter. But this tomboy wasn't going to be beat. Teeth, hair, blood, all sacrificed for an independent outlook. But it was a happy time. Family camping trips to every national park in the West. Yellowstone had the most impact. I fell in love with wildlife, wilderness, and wonder. And so a year before my fledgling was due to fly the nest, this single mom decided it was time for them to migrate. And we flew the wrong direction for the winter. Eight years ago, I found myself here learning a whole, eight years ago, I found myself here in a whole new career. The science and art genes came together in the shape of a digital SLR camera. It was the beginning of a complete change in animal behavior. It became an obsession, but you still have to earn a living. There are multiple jobs that make ends meet while I learned a new trade, and I shot portraits and weddings and senior high pictures, pretty much anything to feed the growing addiction. But I still found time to hike in the wilderness and shoot an occasional landscape. And it wasn't far from this to shooting wild animals in their unique habitat. <laughs> Once you understand the basics of your camera and light, photographing animals really isn't that difficult. But I wanted more than a pretty portrait. I wanted to record what made them tick, who they were, how they lived. And so along with hiking came observing and anticipating and hours of sitting patiently, like this guy which was how I came to be found working in the bushes behind the library. I had never really photographed a great gray owl before and would have traveled across the country to do so, but here he was in our own backyard. I found him flying across the bridge towards the bird feeders. It was a magic moment, but I had no idea what his routine was or indeed what to expect at all. I wasn't as focused on schoolwork or probably any work as I should have been, and so began days of diurnal activity. I returned every day to observe and learn, six, eight, 10, 12 hours a day. He posed. He stared through my lens at me, or so it seemed. I watched him hunt, groom, nap, and silently fly. He ignored the curious red squirrels or rambunctious dogs and the, even the few overeager photographers that got too close. He patiently went about the business, the dignified business of being a great gray. He was a specialist. He ate voles, lots of voles, and nothing but voles. After two or three, he'd fly to one of his favorite perches and take a nap. Upon awakening, he would carefully groom his feathers, fluff them up, and he often fo followed this with a poop, or he coughed up a pellet one per victim. <laughs> There he was, his brilliant yellow eyes, alert, fixed, calm, dilated, sometimes sleepy, but always listening and always watching. But in return, he was being watched. It was great to see the, the, the 
the delight of preschoolers when he turned his head 360 degrees. After 24 hours, I knew him. I knew where he was going to fly next, and I knew what he was apt to do, and I positioned myself accordingly for the shot I hoped for, and he usually obliged. I felt privileged to have this relationship, and I was equally delighted that he was observed by so many fascinated Bozemanites. Great greys are not known as Phantom of the Forest for nothing, so for all of us to be able to spend so much time with him and watch his behavior was really wonderful. Um, I always knew the supply of voles would run out, and indeed, six days and 6,000 images later, he was gone. I texted a friend who had been observing with me that I felt like I lost a friend, and then I had to quickly explain I didn't mean her. Animal behavior needs some thought. Old dogs can learn new tricks, and coming to Montana and discovering photography completely changed my life. You can reinvent yourself, and what a place to do it. Every day is thrilling, and you never stop learning. The animals will tell their tale, but they must do it in their own time and without you being a part of that behavior. Now, the downside of obsession is the futility of resistance. Despite being way behind in everything, a few days later found me here. A half, million, a half a million sandhill cranes are pretty hard to ignore, and I could. 17 hours of driving to Nebraska to be locked in a freezing plywood box and given a bucket for a bathroom. How could I resist? At first frustration, the birds refused to come into lens range, but then a bald eagle decided he had watched long enough and flew lazily towards the mass cranes with nothing but mischief in his heart. Ten minutes of chaos as the sky filled with sandhill cranes in the air with their rattling calls. It was so totally worth it. I pinch myself sometimes to make myself realize how lucky I am to be surrounded by such beauty and mystery. But I suppose it was inevitable I would end up here. You can no more deny your destiny than you can ignore the wonders around us. So please, go out and see what you can find in your own backyard. This is what I found 10 feet from my kitchen window when I noticed the unwavering and intense stare of my two dogs. You really don't have to go far to enjoy the wonders of Montana. Thank you.